Welcome back everybody. Moving on to the next example. We have a function f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c and it has a horizontal tangent at a coordinate 3 and negative 2 and passes through the point 1 and 4. Find constants a, b, and c. Now whenever you're finding constants usually the number of constants you're finding you're going to require that same number of equations so we're finding three constants so we're going to need three equations and then we can do substitution elimination etc etc to solve for those constants so we have this function and it has a horizontal tangent at this coordinate and it passes through this coordinate. So that means that both of these coordinates are on the function. So we can make two equations like that. So we know that f of three equals negative two. That's one equation we can make. We also know that f of one is equal to four that is another equation we can make because those are coordinates that are on the function. Now what about a third function? What piece of information can we use? Well, we're told that there's a horizontal tangent at this coordinate 3 and negative 2. Well, a horizontal tangent means that the slope of that tangent is equal to 0. So that means that the value of the derivative at that specific point is equal to 0. So we know that the derivative is always going to be in terms of x. So we know the derivative of this function at an x value of 3 is equal to 0 because there's going to be a horizontal tangent on it. So the third equation that we can make is that f of prime 3 is equal to 0. So making equations for those first two are pretty easy. All we do is we use that f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c that we're given. So for f of 3 equaling negative 2, we would just plug in negative 2 for f of x on the left side, and then we would just plug in 3 for all of the x's on the right side, and we'd end up with negative 2 equals 9a plus 3b plus c. Same thing here, f of 1 equals 4, we plug in 4 for the y value or for the f of x on the left side, and then plug in 1 for all the x values on the right side, and we end up with 4 equaling a plus b plus c. Now, what about this equation here, this f prime 3 equaling 0? Well, we're not given a equation or an expression for f prime x, we're only given f of x. So how do we do that? Well, if f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, and we know that a, b, and c are just constants, then we can find the derivative of this by keeping that a, b, and c constant. So the derivative of this first part here, we would bring the 2 down and then subtract 1 from the exponent. We would just use the power rule. So we'd have 2a x to the power of 1. The uh, derivative of b to the x well, the b we would just keep on the side and then the derivative of x is just 1. So then b times 1 is just b. And then the derivative of c, because c is just a constant by itself, the derivative of a constant is 0. So this here, 2ax plus b represents the derivative of f of x if a, b, and c are just constants. So now we can use this expression for f of prime x to make an equation for f of prime 3 equaling 0. So f of prime x would equal 0 in this case, so we would just keep 0 on the left side. And then f of prime 3, we would just plug in 3 for the x values on the right side. So plugging in 3 for this x value here, we would get 6a plus b. And now we have three equations. So this here is equation one, this one's equation two, and then this one's equation three. Three equations, three unknowns, and now we can solve for our constants. Now there are a bunch of different ways that you can solve for these constants. You could do substitution, elimination, you could even put it into a matrix if you've learned that and then solve for the constants. So I'm going to do it with a mix of substitution and elimination. So the first thing that I notice is with equations 1 and 2, they both have this c value. 
So if we can subtract one of them from the other, the C value would go away and then we'd be left with a more simplified equation with only two constants. So if we take equation one and subtract equation two, negative two minus four, that would give us negative six on the left side. 9a minus 1a would give us 8a, 3b minus 1b would give us 2b, and then c minus c would just give us 0. So now we have this simplified equation, negative 6 is equal to 8a plus 2b. Also notice how in equation 3, it's really easy to isolate for that b value. So because 0 is equal to 6a plus b, we also know that b is equal to negative 6a. So that there is equation three as well. We just rearranged it. So now what we can do is we can sub in this equation three into this equation. We can sub in that B value of negative six A into the B value here, and then we'll just have an equation in terms of the variable A, and then we can solve for it. So if we take this and sub it in for this B here, we'd have negative six equals eight a plus two times negative six a. And now notice how we can solve for that a variable. So we'd have negative six equals eight a minus 12 a, two times negative six is negative 12. So then eight a minus 12 a is negative four a and then negative six divided by negative four. So we'd have an a value of three over two. So that's one of our constants right there. Now the B value, we know that it's equal to negative 6A, so we can just sub that in here and get the B constant. So B would equal negative six times three over two, which is the A value that we found. So then B would be negative six times three is negative 18, and then negative 18 divided by two would give us negative nine. So that there represents the B constant. And now that we have our constant A and constant B, we can plug it either into equation one or equation two, those constants A and B, and then solve for C. Notice that we can't use equation three because there's no C variable there. So which one should we plug it into? I think that equation two looks a lot easier to deal with. So from here, we'd have four equals, let's uh, rewrite that equation, but now let's sub in that a value of three over two, and then that b value of negative nine. So we'd have three over two minus nine plus c. And then when you do all the algebra and you isolate for c, you would get a final answer of 23 over two. So those are our three answers. Those are the three constants. A is equal to three over two, B is equal to negative nine, and then C is equal to 23 over two. Another thing you can do to check your answer is to take these constants and then plug them in to that original equation that we have, and then make sure that all of these equations hold. So if we do that, taking those constants and then making an equation, we'd have three over two x squared, three over two being the a constant, minus nine x, the b constant is negative nine, plus that c constant of 23 over two. And then if I take that function and take its derivative, I would get the derivative of three x minus nine if we just apply the power rule on all three of those parts of the function. And then if you check all of these three equations, f of three will equal negative two. If you plug in three for all the x values, you would get a value of negative two. If you plug in a one for all the x values in the function, you would get a y value of four. And if you plug in uh, x value of three in the derivative, you would get a derivative of zero. So we can be pretty confident that the constants that we got are the correct answers for this question. Now there's actually another way to solve this question. It's actually a quicker way. However, there are hidden costs of trying to use this way in a general case for any sort of question that you get like this. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So first I'm gonna explain how you can do it the other way. Now, notice how f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, that is a quadratic, that's a parabola. So we know it's gonna be a parabola that either opens up or down. 
Next, we're told that there's a horizontal tangent at 3 and negative 2. Well, a horizontal tangent, it always happens at either a maximum or a minimum value. There are also other uh, points that look sort of like this, but in this case, we're not dealing with that kind of function because it's a quadratic. So the fact that on a quadratic, a horizontal tangent is happening at 3 and negative 2, we know that that point is going to represent the vertex of the quadratic. So we know that the vertex is happening at an x value of 3 and a y value of negative 2. So let's say the vertex is like right here. And then we're also told that this quadratic has a coordinate 1 and 4. So 1 and 4 is somewhere up here. So if we draw this quadratic, it's going to look something like this. So it's passing through this point 1 and 4, and it also has a vertex at 3 and negative 2, because at 3 and negative 2, there is a horizontal tangent on that function. So we can get to this function really quickly knowing that information. So we can take this quadratic, put, put it in vertex form, so y equals a x minus h squared plus d. If you remember, that is the vertex form of a quadratic. So we know that y is going to equal a and then we'd have x minus 3 squared minus 2 because 3 and negative 2 represents the vertex. And then we can plug in that point 1 and 4 for x and y and then solve for that a value. So if we plug in 4 for y and then 1 for x and then we isolate for that a, we would have a equals 3 over 2. And notice how that's the same constant that we got here. But notice how this quadratic here and the one we're given, that's in expanded standard form, while this one is in vertex form. So if we take this constant that we found, the a equaling 3 over 2, and put it in this vertex form, so we'd have y equals 3 over 2 x minus 3 squared minus 2. When we expand all that, so we FOIL that x minus 3 times x minus 3 part and then distribute that 3 over 2 inside the bracket, we would end up with that same function, 3 over 2 x squared minus 9x plus 23 over 2. So that is another way to get those constants a equaling 3 over 2, b equaling negative 9, and then c equaling 23 over 2. And it's a lot quicker than finding the derivative, the general derivative 2ax plus b, and then making these three equations, solving for the three constants. However, the reason why I showed the other way first, it's the more important way to do it, is because this way will only work when the function is a quadratic and you're given this specific type of information. What if this wasn't a quadratic? What if this was ax cubed? Well, if it's ax cubed, we know that it's a polynomial function that can have multiple max and mins. So we can't just make a vertex form for a cubic function. So this way wouldn't work. We would have to do it the other way. So that's why I didn't want to show this way initially. I wanted to show it the other way because that other way will always work no matter what type of function, no matter what type of information you're given. You always have to make these equations and then solve for the unknowns. But either way, I thought I would show both cases. But just be aware that this second way only works for this specific question. It's not always going to work while the other way, the first way, it's always going to work. And you're going to keep running into questions like this throughout the course, and they're going to get more and more complex, and you're always going to have to use that first way that I showed you. So really focus on that first method. This second method, obviously it's good to know, and if you use this method to solve this question, that's what you thought of initially, good for you, that's good thinking. 
but uh, really focus on that first method. Get used to doing it that way because that's how you're going to be solving these types of questions as they come up in the course as we go on. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.